Hey guys, welcome back to Drunk on Riding, and welcome to a special episode. One, not only brought to you in part through the patronage of RA North, but actually on a subject chosen by my number one patron as part of the Drunk on Riding 2.0 sort of fundraiser that I had earlier in the year. Number one patron, RA North, by the way, has a personal message that I will be sharing a little later on in this episode, with his permission, of course. Now, the topic for today... LeVar Burton, or rather, LeVardis Robert Martin Burton Jr. Sort of sounds like a, a, a Mario enemy, doesn't he? Uh, but you might know him from several projects, whether his Emmy-nominated turn in Roots, in which he played the young Kunta Quinte, Star Trek The Next Generation, where he dazzled as the blind but all too perceptible, except when it came to the ladies anyway, Jordi LaForge, or for the role probably most associated with this channel. You guys had your chance to vote for the Star Trek dissections. Or, you know, it might, we could also kind of consider it a forebear for, for Drunk on Riding. As the award winning host of Reading Rainbow, where he helped inspire countless kids to read. Yes, I'm trying to do the same, and no, I, I know I'm not nearly as successful. Not yet, but I'm working on it. You know, I don't have this amazing acting career behind me or, you know, PBS funding. I don't know, PBS seemed like, like a god back then. Anyways. The man's a certifiable legend, and he's, ha he's had quite the career, including a number of other acting and directing gigs. He even won a Grammy for Best Spoken Word Album for the autobiography of Martin Luther King Jr. He's written and published a few books, and you can find him now on his podcast, LeVar Burton Reads, which we'll come back to. Or possibly in an upcoming Star Trek project, I don't know, you never know, he might, he might show up at some point. Be kind of exciting. Nothing's announced, of course, but you never know. But but that's the now, right? Let's jump back to the then, because there is an origin story here, not just for Burton the actor, but for Burton the champion of reading. He was born at the U.S. Army Landstall Regional Medical Center in West Germany, while his father, a U.S. Army Signal Corps photographer, was stationed there. But he was primarily raised in Sacramento, California by his mother, Irma Jean Christian, a social worker, administrator, and educator. Though for her, the job wasn't the important thing. As, as LeVar Burton put it in an interview he did with uh, Lola Fadulu for The Atlantic, My mom talked a lot about not necessarily her job, but her belief that one's life should be a service to the greater community. That was certainly something I picked up and absorbed. Most of the people in my family are in the field of education in one way or another. It's kind of the family business. We're also a family that really values education, puts a very high premium on education and its value in society and for individuals. I personally believe that education is the key to freedom. Actually, literacy is the key to freedom because you can educate yourself. So, I mean, all that said, it makes so much sense then that his very first career choice was to be a priest. No, you're right. No, it doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, LeVar Burton was raised Catholic, but to, to become a priest? Actually, entirely his idea. As he put it in that same interview, I had a calling. I felt like that's how I was destined to spend my life, and so I took steps as early as I could in that direction, and my mom was very supportive. I entered the Catholic seminary at the age of 13 in Northern California. I began my formal training as an initiate into the Order of the Society of the Divine Savior. This was at the St. Pius X Seminary in Galt, California, where he spent four years and graduated. However, during those four years, he also read up on many a philosopher and started questioning, questioning the Christian dogma, as he put it. I decided that I needed to find some other focus for my life at the ripe old age of 17. I sort of took inventory. What did I feel like I was good at? Where did I find some passion, some juice in my life? And the answer was theater arts. So he enrolled at the University of Southern California with a drama scholarship and appeared in his very first short film just some two odd years later, Almost a Man, based on the story The Man Who Was Almost a Man. By Richard Wright, and which seems still oddly fitting all these years later as it's about a 15-year-old who thinks getting himself a gun 
will earn him respect. This goes about as well as you would assume, and we're pretty much going to leave that there. But LeVar Burton really made his mark in the 1977 ABC award-winning drama series Roots, based on the novel by Alex Haley, where, as I mentioned, he played a young Kun Takinte, and earned him an Emmy nomination for Best Actor in a Drama Series. Now, over 130 million people watched Roots when it aired. To put that in perspective, that's like 10, 100 times what, what the amount of people that currently watch The Walking Dead when it's live. 10 or 100. One of those. I don't remember where the decimal is. But, you know, that's a huge amount. Famously, it did not include Ronald Reagan at the time he refused to watch. He's, you know, a weird dude. But the, the show was, I mean, to call it culturally significant is to kind of put it lightly. I mean, it really brought to light for a whole lot of people, a, a wide swath of the American public just how awful and cruel the slave trade was like people had talked about it before this obviously but this put it in a different light you know you could see it this was visceral it it it, it showed how it impacted and continues to impact culture our culture our society and very particularly obviously african american society african american identity and and its suppression a notion sort of really summed up in what very well might be the show's most infamous scene your name is toby what's your name Gunta. as burton himself put it when asked about the societal impact of roots, it expanded the consciousness of people. Blacks and whites began to see each other as human beings, not as stereotypes. And you throw a petal into the pond, you're going to get ripples. But while roots was downright important, especially at the time, for me as a millennial, I have two touch points for LeVar Burton. Neither of them are roots, if I have to be brutally honest. One, maybe the most obvious nowadays, I'll get to in a second. But the other, reading Rainbow. He was the host and executive producer for the show from 1983 through 2006, running for 23 seasons. This series got Burton his Emmy. 12 of them, in fact. I mean, what do you do with 12 Emmys in the exact same category? And do you, do you line them up on the shelf and just kind of look how the metal has changed each and every year? I mean, is it like a coin collection? Like, what do you do with that? I don't know, I'm just jealous I don't have an Emmy. I mean, it would look good on this shelf right back here, wouldn't it? Yeah, put it right, put it right up there next to Jack. That'd be sweet. Um, but Reading Rainbow was devised to sort of combat the summer slump. You, you know exactly what this is when students, as a student, like I would do this, I would get out of school in June or July or May or whatever you get out of school nowadays, and... The rest of the summer, I would go outside, I would go on trips, I would watch TV, I'd watch a movie, I'd play some video games, do some sports, whatever have you, you know, all the fun stuff. I didn't, generally did not read a lot of books during that time until I started to get forced to. Reading Rainbow was sort of seen as a solution to this, to try to keep kids from backsliding a bit. And the solution that they came up with was marry TV with books. Each episode would celebrate a different book, a different story, and then explore its themes in different, exciting sort of ways. Stuff to keep the kids' attentions. Maybe exciting isn't the right word. In invigorating? Invigorating. Yeah, invigorating sounds a lot better. And what's super cool is it worked. Millions turned into Reading Rainbow, including number one drunk on riding patron, Arya North, who has a little personal anecdote I think fits in perfectly right here. Arya says, There was a brief period in my childhood where LeVar Burton was my internal reading voice whenever I read any book. It's come back for some stories since I started listening to his new podcast. Mr. Burton, I really hope you continue to be that voice inside my head. I think that's 
that's pretty sweet. It's so it's so pure right there, you know. So so what did I say? Where, where did I leave off? Um, millions tuned in to watch Reading Rainbow, and millions bought it on tape, on DVD, etc. And teachers would watch it with their students. Parents would watch it with their kids. Now, true, the show faced a lot of financial troubles and was almost constantly on the verge of being canceled, but it just kept running. It kept being something that was supported by the community at large. And it certainly made a mark on, at the very least, keeping kids re reading, you know, though that continued to get harder to the point where today, most adults I know don't read a book. You think the kids are going to be reading books? No. While we're here, should we talk about the end of Reading Rainbow? I don't think I want to talk about the end of Reading Rainbow just yet. Let's, let's talk Star Trek The Next Generation. In 1986, Gene Roddenberry, creator of Star Trek, Creme de la Creme, was relaunching Star Trek, a very new series of Star Trek, and he came to Burton with a role the press billed as the new Spock, probably because he was so much better known than all the other actors on the show. But of course, the new Spock is not what this role turned out to be. That, of course, would be Data? No, maybe Worf. Or wait, would that be Riker? I guess that would be Riker. Anyway, Lieutenant Junior Grade Geordi LaForge, later just Lieutenant, Geordi LaForge, named after Star Trek fan George LaForge, who died from muscular dystrophy, uh, unfortunately. And Geordi, he's blind, but able to see, in quotes, of course, through this visor that gives him sort of predator vision. Not sure why this far into the future we're not able to heal his eyes, given we can heal everything else, including, you know, famously Klingon triple spines or whatever, double spines. But I digress. Also, a little ironic they'd make the blind guy the helmsman, but I guess that was the point, right? Whatever, he became chief engineer soon enough. <laughs> but now, in Next Gen, there was very much a formula. You know, it's it's sort of like shows nowadays where they f it follows this general suit. And for Next Gen, every single episode sort of revolved around one or more of the core casts. And some of them were better than others. Jordy's episodes were mostly others. You know, they generally revolved around his inability to hold on to a relationship, to, to be smooth with women, as as he uh, generally put it. But he did he did better as like a side character, especially when he was paired with Data. He had a couple, uh, he, he was uh, Watson to Data's Sherlock Holmes. And those were fantastic episodes, but his own standalone ones, not so much. Though they did pave the way for some um, moral dilemmas that were debated in later Trek episodes. Like, is it okay to be in love with a simulation? Is it okay to date what is essentially a copy of a person? Yeah, it, it always kind of just came off as creepy, a little weird, and sad, really. And it, the worst part is, there was never any real resolution to this like he never he never found love so far as we know he doesn't have any kind of really canonical story resolution at least on film he was always just Jordy. anyways after next gen went off air in 1994 lavar burton would go on to reprise his role in each of the film continuations and would even lose his visor come 1996's star trek first contact arguably if you're asking me the best of the bunch and he'd even pop up in an episode of the next flagship's Trek series, Star Trek Voyager, though as an alternate future self. That wasn't the last of his involvement with Trek, though. Of course, other than conventions and other fan events, Burton also, as many actors do on long-running series, decided to try his hand at directing. First with the Season 6 episode Second Chances, and again in Season 7 of Next Gen with Pegasus. Pretty good episodes, actually. Uh, and he'd go on to direct 10 episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, 8 episodes of Star Trek Voyager, and 
9 from Star Trek Enterprise. Burton would also direct and star in a number of other projects, including Becker, Ali, Community, Big Bang Theory, and Charmed, you know, among others. Not that he, he starred in and directed all of those, you know, one or the other, generally. I don't know if he directed or starred in anything other than Star Trek. I'm not sure. Anyways, he's also done a plethora of voice work as well, like in Adventure Time, Transformers, Rescue Bots, and probably most notably, Captain Planet and the Planeteers. But all that time, while he appeared on Star Trek for like 22 weeks of the year, LeVar Burton continued to host Reading Rainbow. Like I said, the thing went on for 23 seasons. But all good things come to an end, and in 2006, Reading Rainbow went off the air. The end, right? Well, no, actually. In 2011, Reading Rainbow's owner, Western New York Public Broadcasting Association, aka WNED, though I don't know how that works, in Buffalo, New York, agreed to license the brand to Burton and his business partner, Mark Wolf, who together formed RR Kids. You can see the, the Reading Rainbow influence there. A year later, Reading Rainbow was reimagined as an app. It was almost immediately a top download, and by January 2014, more than 10 million books had been read through it. Not bad, right? So, why stop there? In May 2014, they launched a Kickstarter to fully revive Reading Rainbow as a web program for schools that would also be available for so-called schools in need, for free. The campaign passed $2 million in two days and ended just shy of $6.5 million. And I think it still holds the record for most backers, with about 106,000. The resulting service? Reading Rainbow Skybrary, a subscription-based digital library that was... basically the show with integrated curriculums, launched in March 2016. All well and good, right? Everybody's happy, everybody's using this, everybody's having a good time. Well, everyone except WNED, who in August... 2017 filed a lawsuit claiming LeVar Burton and RR Kids violated their copyright, not just by launching a Kickstarter without their involvement, but also because Burton uses his reading rainbow catchphrase, but you don't have to take my word for it, in his podcast, LeVar Burton Reads. Yeah, I told you we'd get back here. He launched that too in 2017, though this one's aimed toward adults. You should check it out because... I mean, it's for us. It's for the generations that grew up on Reading Rainbow. You know, as Burton put it to comicbook.com, if I had a mission statement for LeVar Burton Reads, it would be to remind the Reading Rainbow generation how important reading is in their lives and their imaginations. As of now, well, you know, it seems that everything was settled. LeVar Burton Reads is keeping on, and so is the line. The Reading Rainbow Skybrary, it was rebranded and now falls under the LeVar Burton Kids umbrella, WNED took complete control of Reading Rainbow and, as noted on the official Reading Rainbow website, WNED is currently working on the next chapter of Reading Rainbow to reimagine the program for a new generation of young readers who consume media in very different ways than children did just a decade ago. And is it just me or is there some, some serious shade being thrown around in this quote from WNED's CEO and President Donald Boswell. There are many apps and shows that focus on the fundamentals of reading, but nothing has stepped into the role that Reading Rainbow played, which was to celebrate and encourage the pure pleasure of reading and to build literacy skills beyond figuring out letters and words. I've got some teachers who might disagree with that, but I'll accept it. And obviously, whatever the terms were, LeVar Burton did the same. Which, to me, makes sense, because it never seemed like he was about the profit, about the, the money, about the, the notoriety, even. It seems to me like there was a, he had like a higher calling with this, you know? It, it, so it doesn't, I don't think it matters what, where it is or, or who is doing it. As he said, as long as we are engaged in storytelling that moves the culture forward, it doesn't matter what format it is. Because storytelling and visual storytelling was put in the hands of everybody. And we have all now become storytellers. By the way, quick aside that has absolutely nothing to do with anything that I've talked about so far. 
But did you know that Mika Burton is his daughter? What? I mean, I know I didn't talk a lot about his personal life, like how he's married to who seems to be a lovely supporting wife, Stephanie, or has a son, Ian, he didn't even know about until he was three years old, but I've been listening to Mika's content for years, and I never knew that. I never even got a hint of that. I was like, what? That's... It's just nuts. It's nuts. <laughs> but this is this has been the drunk on riding mini biography of LeVar Burton. And I hope it did him some justice because I think without LeVar Burton, drunk on riding probably wouldn't be here. I, people probably wouldn't be watching or listening to drunk on riding at the very least. So thank you for that, Mr. Burton. And hey, if you are ever around the area and want to stop by and show me how it's done you are welcome any day of the week i hope you i hope you do that'd be cool that'd be really cool <laughs> remember if you enjoyed this episode head on over to drunkonwriting.com for a bunch of exclusives to help the channel grow and so much more or if you don't feel like doing that just please give the video a thumbs up leave a comment below subscribe to the channel do whatever you know, you do on YouTube or wherever you happen to be watching this. And until next time, the next video, cheers and keep on writing and reading. <laughs> keep on reading too. Why not?